Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in again this week. Uh, so we just saw that we got the uh, overhead console fixed. So now we're going to start working on the odometer in this 2001 F-150. So the issue that I've been having is it only occasionally comes on. You know, when you're driving it will occasionally come on and then it will stay on for a bit. Otherwise, some days it will just turn on and stay on. And some days it's just off. So you have no idea what the odometer reading is. So from what I've read online is it's just another, uh, you know, dry solder joint, just like it was on this overhead council. So today we're going to tear apart this dash, get into that gauge cluster, then we're going to actually start working on getting that to where we can reflow the solder joints for it, and it's going to show us everything that we need to know on the odometer, and it's going to be a permanent fix rather than it just occasionally coming on. So. I'm going to try and show you the issue. I don't know if it's going to come on with this start or not. Like I said, it's very intermittent. But let's see what it does. As you can see, it's currently out over here. So that's what we're going to be fixing. We're going to make it so it instantly comes on when I start the truck. Sometimes you can, you know, hit it, do different things, and it might come on. Don't recommend that. But now we can see the issue. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go up and I'm going to disconnect the battery. Uh, this is going to be, you know, the gauge cluster, so it might tie into the airbags. Not entirely sure about that myself, but just disconnect the battery whenever you're working on anything electrical in your car. That's just a good rule of thumb, something you should follow. So I'm going to go unplug that battery, leave it off for about 10 minutes, then we'll come back to wrench and I getting this taken apart, and then we'll reflow that and we'll get it working again. Okay, first thing we're going to want to start on is getting the actual light switch out of here. So what you're going to see is there's a little gap at the bottom of it for you to insert a screwdriver. What you're going to do is you put the screwdriver in, then you pull up on it a little, and then you just really got to force it out of there. It does not feel right, but it's the way it goes. Just like that. So once it's now out, nice and dusty too. We're going to disconnect the two clips on the back of it. You can see right there. All you have to do is push in on them and then pull out. These ones have been in there for a while though, so they're going to provide a little bit of a struggle. First one's out. Now we just got to get the second clip out. If you can't do it, you can kind of gingerly use a screwdriver to press it down. And there you go. So once those two are out, we can actually start working on getting the back panel off here. So in order to do that, we're going to lower the steering wheel all the way. Then we're just going to pull this piece off. It's real simple, it just pulls right off. You just got to get a finger in there to get it out. I like to start at the bottom, work my way up. There we go. Now it's all out. You can change the gear selector if you need to to get it out of here. Actually, something I'm going to do right now. down and first then you can slide it out and we're just going to move her back into park take the key out again then we're going to start working on getting this piece out of here so for that you're going to need a socket and I believe it's a 7 mil so we're going to try that first Perfect, we actually got it right. I thought that's what it was, because that's what the Ranger is, but it was not 100% sure. So I'm going to take this screw out right here, and there's two screws back up in here. You're going to want to aim for the one that's on the right. Looks like that's going to be 
little bit of an issue. Let's see if we can raise this to get it out of the way. There we go. Could have just got a smaller extension, but that would have been the easy thing to do. Like with all projects, make sure you put your screws somewhere you know you'll lose them. I'm going to use the floor for that. Seems like a great idea. There's going to be three of them up on top of here. Once again, that gear shift is going to get in the way. But that's a simple fix. So just give me one moment, I'll be right back and I'm going to go get a smaller extension. I'm going to try and do things the easy way. Okay, to get a smaller extension, but I also got my thumb ratchet. I'm going to try that. might be a little easier. Just spinning it right out. These ones are always a trial and patience. one left up top because there's going to be three on the top of it. up again and now put the light switch in the back there'll be one right in this cubby right here hence why you had to get the light switch off there to begin with make sure you drop that screw We'll collect that in a bit. <laughs> then you're going to have one more back in here. It's going to be a little difficult to reach. I need my extension. Of the shorter variety. It's going to be the one on the left this time, I believe, that you want to take out. game of dropping too. Just get our hand in there. Okay. Now with that, everything should be disconnected that I can think of. So we're just going to drop her down again. Then we're going to start pulling it out. like that. There is one more switch right over here for the power pedals. I 
once again it just has a push in pin then it will disconnect and it will back to park so we don't worry about rolling and then we're going to reclaim our little friend that dropped okay now we're into the gauge cluster the gauge cluster bolts are right down there there's one up there there's one right back in there is one if you go up there's another one right back in there so basically just look for the white plastic and those are the ones that hold in the gauge cluster. So we're going to start on that one. See if we can get it to where you can see it. There it is, right by that cracked plastic right up in there. This is where it comes in a lot of handy having the super long extension. I would not want to play this game otherwise. There we go. There we go. That one's really in there. Nice and hidden away. So I wouldn't want to make this too easy for you. That'd just be a shame. Okay, once we get that out, I'm just gonna pull the screw out. So, what I'm gonna do now. Once again, we're going to drop the selector. We're just going to continue navigating this out. There are two clamps in the back. So what we're going to start out by doing is we're going to take out the selector. There's these two little pieces right here on each side of it. Just pinch them in and pull it down. So once they're pinched in, Pull it down. There you have it. Your gauge selector is free. And now, I'm not going to be able to show you right now. I'll show you in a sec where they're plugged in at. But there are two wire connectors back there. There we go. So this one was right in here. And you got the white one right here. Let's just pull those two out. It's free. Let's put her back in park. Now let's go back out to the old soldering table, aka the truck bed. Let's get this torn apart and let's resolder those joints on it. Okay, we got the uh, console out and it is now sitting on the truck bed to where we can work on it. I'm just going to plug the soldering iron in now so it will be ready when we're good. But now it's going to have seven screws in it. These are just going to be hex head screws. So you just got to take those off to take out the back, the back plastic cover. Not too much to it. Once you get the screws out, we're halfway home. exact same screw, so don't worry about mixing some of them up. Does not matter which way they go back in.
go on the left. I would actually say actually fixing the problems easier than getting to it. The hardest part is getting this all out. Once those are out though, just lift off the white plastic. You're going to see the board in here. So if you needed to replace a light bulb, you could just twist one out and put a new one in right while you're at it. But for us, we're going to be focusing on right here. So we want to unplug this clip first off. So that's unplugged. Then we just want to lift the board off of here. So let's kind of slowly peel it up. And it will come right off. Then we're going to flip it over. This is where that plug was. So we're going to want to re-solder these right here. Those joints are the things with the issues that go wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down. And I will say the main thing is these two outer posts that actually rot out. Uh, but we're just going to solder them all just to be safe. So just touch your solder to your iron. Make sure it's hot enough. Get it tinned a little bit. And just hold it to it. Once it gets hot enough, the solder will start to melt. Then just stick some solder to each one. So that one took a little bit of solder. It's getting to its melting point right now, so we stick a little glob on there. You're just going to do this the whole way down. If you get some solder on your iron, it will actually make it heat up faster, so you can go even quicker. That's what's happening right here. There you go. They're all re-soldered, ready to go back in the truck, and the odometer should work now. So I'm just going to unplug the soldering iron. Take this board. take the council, we're just going to line it up and then press it down on there. Real easy. We're going to take our clip again, we're just going to plug that back on. Then all we need to do is put the cover on and re-screw it back together. Once again there's just seven of these screws does not matter which order they go back in. Just start putting them in there. Don't over tighten it. That is the one negative that you could do. But as long as you're not over tightening it, you should be fine. Like I said, that's probably the easiest part of the entire thing is actually fixing it. Getting it out is the hardest. Fixing it is simple. Like five bucks for a soldering iron on eBay. Really, you shouldn't feel too bad, you know, about attempting this yourself. And most soldering irons will come with cheap solder, so you don't really need to worry about that either. Let's say you were kind of curious. I like to use 60/40 solder, but everyone has their own preferences. I just don't really like the pure lead-free stuff. It doesn't seem to stick as well. There we go. All screwed back together. It's all good now. So all we have to do is go reinstall it in the truck. Okay, now we're back in the truck with the fixed console. So all we have to do now is just turn it so we can lower the selector so we can get it back in there. I'm going to take these clips and reattach them on. It's good until you hear it click in. Just like that. Now we're going to put it in. put this in part so we don't have to 
slide anywhere. We'll hold our foot on the brake. And all it is is just pushing this back in. Just gotta get the screws out of my hand for. it, find its place, hook it right in, now you can see it's all back together, little test before we go too far, it all moves, we're good to go. So now just push it back until all the holes line up just like that. Then we can start screwing it back together. So I'm going to start with I'm going to start with an easier one, I think. I'm going to go for this upper corner. Make sure you drop the screw at least ten times. Probably just put it in my hand to start it. Might be easier for this one. Some of them you might not be able to, but this one you definitely can. These are just held on with little plastic clips, so I wouldn't even use the socket on it. Just use your extension. Okay, just got some tape of the electrical variety. Just gonna take a little piece of it. You're gonna want it to stick to this. So I just stick the bolt head on there. Crinkle it down just a bit to make it a little thicker. Then you should be able to just stuff it on like that and it will hold it. So then you can actually line it up and do this work. That makes it so much easier. So once it's started, you can reach in there, re-grab your tape. That's the hardest part of this method is just pulling that back off. And I guess theoretically you could leave it. I don't know, just a stickler for not having anything in there that didn't come apart with it. If you can't get your hands in there, you may end up having to use a uh, needle nose pliers, but I was able to get that back out. So now, I'm just going to tighten it up again. Once again, I'm not going to use the extension. This is just plastic cold and plastic, so we really do not want to over tighten. And potentially break something cold in the gauge cluster. So there we go. Could reuse the old tape, but I like to use a new piece each time. It just keeps it nice and convenient because otherwise it doesn't stick as well the second and third time and then. Yeah, you're just in the same fun situation of not being able to figure it out again. So now we're going to go for this top one. Once again, the tape makes this so much easier. It's definitely the recommended way of doing it, in my opinion, but I'm sure everyone has their own unique way. So the only annoying part about the tape is getting it back out. It really works for anything. I just use the old electrical tape because it's way more sticky. But I mean, when you really need to, I've actually used a leaf for it before to get that to work. Because I was actually working out on a truck on the field. There was nothing else there work with what you're given. Got one last one here. Once again, I'm just going to do the same method.
we got those in now, we're ready to start reassembly. So, I believe I threw that piece in the back. I grab this. Once again, we're gonna have to change where it's at. I'd say just clip in the pedals right now. So I'm just putting in that wire to a fix. So the pedals are reconnected. And you're just gonna want to make it so your two light switches are hanging out. Do not want to get those bunched back in there where you'll never see them again. Then kind of just work your way around on it, getting everything lined up. This corner is the fun corner. As you can see, it doesn't really like to go back together. You'll get it though, just keep playing around with it. Eventually, you get lucky and it clicks back in. <laughs> Reconnected. Just kind of press it all in, make sure it's all good to go. Once you know it is, you can start screwing it down. So I'm going to start out with this side because it gave me the most trouble. Don't really feel like playing that game again. And I'm just going to use the foam ratchet. A little bit of room to go. It's a wee bit snugger. So we're going to do that one. And there's one right in here. For that one, it's going to be easier though to use the shorter extension. go until it's tight. You don't have to crank down too hard on it. Then we're going to do these top ones. And if you got it lined up, it's all just going to go straight in. You're not really going to have to fight with anything. So if you're kind of fighting with finding a screw hole, odds are something's not lined up correctly. Biggest part is it's just hard to get some of these in because well, it's not a good place to put your hand. Good. It's all connected. I'm going to go back to the long 
extension again. And get this guy in right here. Where the light switch came out of. Like I said, make sure you'll put it somewhere you won't find it, so I definitely took my advice to heart. Because it fell out of the truck. <laughs> now all we got to do is get this last one in. This one seems like it's going to be a hassle. So we're going to use a smaller extension. bit further. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to tape that one to the socket, but like I said, sometimes I just don't listen to myself. There we go, that one's in. Now we got our light switches. All we're gonna have to do for that is it goes like this. So we just reconnect those in. One click. And then two click. Then just push it in. Just like that. It's all resecured and good to go. Finally, all we have to do is get this piece back on. This one's the most simple, so all it does is press on. Just want to make sure the grommet stays kind of nice on it. all good. We're back in the park. Okay, I'm gonna go reconnect the battery now. Then let's see if she works. Okay, I just reconnected those battery terminals out there. So let's now turn it on, see what happens. See if we got a working odometer again. You can see it just flash, so yep, there it's lit up and we'll turn it on. Perfect. We have a working odometer. Everything is going as it should. No issues. Now we got two of the electrical issues fixed in this 2001 Ford F-150 for about five cents in solder. So you really can't beat that. It's all just stuff that you just got to get in there and do. I'd recommend buying a soldering iron and just practicing on you know, little circuit boards and seeing what you can do first off. And then just, you know, go for it. See what you can fix. Thanks for tuning in again, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.